PFSense is an amazing firewall based on FreeBSD. Whether you're using the free community edition or the paid version PFSense Plus, you should be aware of the system patches plugin. Rather than waiting for releases to be released by NetGate, you can use the system patches plugin to apply patches. If we take a look at uh, NetGate's website, so we can see that 24.11, which is the current version as of the 17th of February today, so 24.11 was the last release, but there's going to have been some patches that have been released that you can apply to your system since. 25.03, so March, is obviously not released yet, but you don't have to wait until then to apply the current patches. Similarly, with the Community Edition, that was last released on the 7th of December, 2023. And there's going to be a bunch of patches that you can apply to your system. We don't know when the next release of the Community Edition is going to be, but you should keep your firewall up to date. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the PFSense Patch Manager to make sure that your firewall is patched up to date, safe and secure. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. We head up to system and then select package manager then you want available packages in search terms we can just type in patch and now you can see that system packages has appeared so we can go ahead and click install and then confirm and now that's installed once it's installed again if we head up to system we'll see we have a new menu option patches so let's go ahead and select that and see what happens so straight away the title at the top says this page allows adding patches either from the official code repository or pasted in from email or other sources. Use with caution. As you can see there's a lot of uh, patches that you can apply. Uh, from the first one, fixed PHP request processing order, fixed PHP session errors, mark certificate authority basic constraints, fix a malformed configuration detection. Uh, and as you can see most of them also have the link to the Redmine issue as well. If you click on that, you can follow through and read more on exactly what that does. And the full description is available. Now, we don't need to um, run through and apply these one by one. That would be a little bit on the tedious side. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see this section here. The package tests each patch and displays the appropriate action. If a patch does not show either apply or revert, the package cannot use the patch. So check the path strip and white space options. Now it does say that it's normal for a patch to only work one way. At a given state of the system, a patch will normally either apply cleanly or revert cleanly, but not both. And you can use the debug option for details on whether or not the package can apply or revert a given patch. And auto apply applies patches in the order shown in the custom patches table. Reorder patches as needed so the package can apply the patches in the intended order. After upgrading, do not revert a patch if the changes from the patch were included in the upgrade. This will remove the changes, which is unlikely to be helpful. We have this top, this top section, custom system patches, and if we click on add new patch, we can specify the description and the URL or commit ID um, or the patch contents, or we can just browse for the patch file and upload it. But that's not really what we want to do. We're not really interested in looking at uh, custom patches at the moment. So if we go back to patches, we scroll back down to the bottom. We can apply all recommended patches, or we can revert all recommended patches. So let's go ahead and just apply them. Are you sure you wish to recommend? Uh, are you sure you wish to apply all recommended patches? Go ahead and hit yes to that. So that was very quick. Applied all recommended patches. Changes may not fully activate until the next reboot or restart of the patched functions. So let's go ahead and reboot the system. We've rebooted, so let's log in and take a look what that looks like. So we're still on 2.7.2 release, which is... Uh, the kernel has not been updated, obviously we're still on FreeBSD 14 current. But if we go back up to system and then head over to patches, this time we can see that we've got recommended system patches for PFSense software 2.7.2. And in this case, we don't have the apply option because we've applied all these patches. The only option we've got at this moment is to revert. So we have successfully uh, applied all these and that is how we keep PFSense up to date. Now, once the patches have been installed, we can revert each patch manually uh, and we can also click revert all recommended patches, which will just basically revert everything that we've just done. We've had a look at how to install the system patches on the community edition of PFSense. So now let's have a look at how to install them on PFSense Plus. The procedure is exactly the same, but obviously the patches are going to be a bit different on PFSense Plus. It's a different product. So let's dive in and have a look at PFSense Plus. I'm on the latest version of PFSense Plus, which is 24.11-release as of the 17th of February 2025, today's date. 
So the same we did with this uh, community edition. Let's go ahead and install the patch manager. So we head up to system, package manager, and then we want available packages. In the search terms, type in patch, hit search, and we have system patches. So we'll go ahead and install that, hit install and confirm. So as you can see, it's a pretty quick install. It doesn't take long at all. With that, we'll give us the patches option, system, patches. As we saw with the community edition, we have the warning. This page allows adding patches either from official code repository or pasted from email or other sources. Use it with caution. Again, at the top, we have custom system patches. Uh, we're not gonna dive into custom patches unless it's actually needed. If you need me to, leave a comment down below. But if you could to add a new patch, uh, you can put a description in, you can put the URL or commit ID. So if you go over to GitHub and find the patch commit ID, you can paste it in here. Uh, or you can paste the patch contents uh, and then just save the patch. But we're just going to look at the uh, standard way of patching. As we saw from the beginning of this, I'm on the latest version of PFSense Plus 2411, but there's a number of patches that could be applied to the system. So it's not completely up to date as we thought it was. Now, we don't have to apply these patches individually. We can scroll down to the bottom and hit apply all recommended patches, which will just apply them all for us. If you'd like to apply individual patches, you can do. If you'd like to see what the patches do, then you can click on the view function. So for example, we've got fixed errors on console when restarting services. If we wanted to see what the difference is between the patched version and what we're currently running, we can click on view and it will show us the details of the patch. If we click on the debug option, we can see that patch can apply cleanly. The patch does not revert cleanly. So we can apply the patch, but reverting it might cause a problem. And if you're interested in that, you can click on detail um but debug result okay so it's quite safe to apply the patches just be a little bit careful when you're removing them so again we're just going to go and apply all these so go ahead click on apply all recommended are you sure you want to apply all the patches yep so they apply pretty much immediately uh, applied all recommended patches changes may not fully activate until the next reboot or the restart of the patched function so if a, a certain function of pfsense has been patched you need to restart that but it's easier just to give your system a full reboot and if we scroll to the bottom and just take a look at the uh, notes, the package tests each push, each patch and displays appropriate action. If a patch does not show either apply or revert, then you can't use a patch. It's normal for a patch to work only one way. And as we've just shown, use the debug option for details on whether or not the package can apply or revert a given patch. Auto apply applies patches in the order shown. After upgrading, do not revert a patch. If the changes from the patch are included, uh, this will remove the changes. So before you apply patches, um, or specifically before you remove them, take a backup of your system. The next section of the video will show you how to take a backup. You should be familiar with how to backup and restore your PFSense system. If you're using a firewall, you should definitely be aware of its backup and restore functions. So if you're going to apply any patches, take a backup first in case you need to remove the patch for whatever reason because it's not always possible to remove them worst case scenario you're gonna to have to reinstall the system and restore from a backup so make sure that you've got an actual current backup it's a good idea to take a backup of pfsense every time you make any changes and if we go to diagnostics backup and restore you've got the backup area here so you can back up the individual areas we're going to leave it to all you can skip the packages you don't need to back up package information uh, you can skip RRD, include extra data, but just leave it to default. So keep your package information. So if you do have to reinstall, when you restore, it'll know what packages have installed and it will automatically reinstall the packages for you. Download the configuration of XML. And you also have the option to encrypt it. Um, so if you're saving it in an untrusted location, you can encrypt the data. If you wasn't aware of how to patch the PFSense system before waiting for uh, actual releases. I hope this video helped. If it did, please hit that like button so it can help others too. Consider subscribing to the channel for more PFSense videos and I'll see you in the next video.